Okay, now when you talk to me, talk pretty slow. Sure. Because down here in Texas, we got that old drawl, you know. Yeah. And I'm not used to that. <laughs> it's I, okay. I can understand you pretty good. Okay. Well, hey, I appreciate it. I can I can hear you pretty good too. So, okay. Hey everybody, this is uh, uh, Sean Slauson here, and welcome to another edition of Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture. And today we are, well, uh, this is a rare treat for for me, as well as I hope everybody else who is listening. Uh, Today we're going to learn about the life and legacy of uh, Charles Harden Holly, and if you don't know who that is, you would know his stage name, Buddy Holly. And I have his older brother, Larry, with me today. And how's it going? Well, it's going time here. I'm um, getting old and <laughs> decrepit, sort of. And I can't do what I used to do. But um, whenever you want me to start in a little bit about Buddy? Yeah, uh, I guess I can ask the first question. Like, uh, since you were his older brother, what was it like living with him? Before he uh, got all famous and stuff and such. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I was sort of a hero to him, I guess. I was about ten and a half years older than him. And whenever I came out of the Marines in World War Two, well, he thought he just followed me around like a little puppy dog. And... Um, Cause I, I fought a lot with him. I took him hunting and fishing some, and he come to me one day and said, "I need a guitar." There's a guy on the school bus told told, told me a few cards. I said, "You can't play a guitar." He said, "Yes, I can. If I can learn." I said, "Okay, where can we get one?" He said, "I don't know. Where can we get one? A forty-five Gibson for forty-five dollars." <laughs> I said, let's go get it. And he would get right in the hall or right out in the way. I was living with mother and daddy because I just got out of service. And I, he was always in the way playing that guitar. But later on, I bought him a strap. And um, he needed some money to go to Nashville. And mother and daddy didn't have the money. But I, I had some mustard and I would pay. And I sort of tried to take him under my wing have him and I probably knew him better than anybody besides mother um, he's alive today because he would confide to me if he had a problem of some kind <clears throat> pardon me he'd confide say, well, I got this problem what do you think and I'd tell him what he ought to do about it and um whether I knew really how to do it or not, I'd tell him something. And he thought that was great. Whenever he started recording, well, he would bring acetates home to me. Uh, the acetate, you know, is the first recording before it's really, really finished out. And I had about 15 of them later on and sold them. I didn't get any money out of it. Maria got all the money. But anyway, that's another story. And anyhow, uh, I'd go with Clovis and whenever he was recording, and he'd bring his acetates home to me sometimes. I don't know how, what, if, he, if I could tell him anything to do to make him better, but I could, he was he was getting better than I was. I, I could play the guitar a little bit, and I played the fiddle much better than the guitar. Oh, yeah. And I couldn't help Buddy because he had it. Uh, you need to ask a question or anything now? Yeah, I can, uh, I can ask you another question. Uh, since uh, you were his older brother, uh, I suppose you had a, a, a big, big influence in his musical career uh, even before he started uh, actually recording, like, you know, in Nashville and stuff like that in Lubbock. Yeah, he, him and uh, different guys got together. Bob Montgomery was one, and Jack McNeil, and uh, this guy from over in uh, El Paso, Don Guest. He's dead now. Don Guest 
played the bass before Joe B's time, and I think even before uh, Nicky Sullivan got in with them. Uh-huh. And, and this is before they met, met uh, Norman. Uh, I've got some recordings. Uh, Lynn Paxton did a very good, or different than what, anything that's out right now. Uh, I mean, some of the same songs, but they're doing them up really, you know, cutting up and yeah. hollering out. And it, it's just like a, it's like he was right there with them, you know. Oh, sure. And um, but I don't know why I'll live with him, but sometime I'll figure out something. Oh, sure. Okay. When Buddy got killed, they liked to they tore me up because we were very close. And my only consolation was the fact that I knew I might get, I'd get to see him again in heaven. And we were Christians. Mother and Daddy took us to church from the time we were about 10 years old. Buddy, from the time he was 2 years old. But I was about 10 or 10 and 11 when we started. And I was saved, and Buddy got saved later on. And that means they'll live forever, according to the Bible. We'll be with the Lord in heaven. And it, it's the greatest thing that could ever happen to a human being. And a lot of people don't even know what, what it's all about. But I'd be glad to tell them how to get there if they wanted to hear and, you know, here's the thing about it. Uh, when Buddy got killed, he, that's probably the best way to die. I mean, it sounds horrible, but he didn't know he was going to get killed. He didn't expect it. He didn't dread it. And all of a sudden, he was alive, and then all of a sudden, his soul and spirit was in heaven with the Lord and some of his relatives. But that's that's another story altogether. Yeah. Um, you know, the world is going downhill real quick. And the rapture's coming up pretty soon. A lot of the people don't even know what the rapture is. But the rapture is whenever... I'll explain it right quick. The rapture is whenever the Lord comes back and takes his people off this earth the ones that were alive and the ones that were in the grave, he'll raise them up. He comes, he just comes in the clouds and blows a trumpet. And the dead in Christ will be raised. And then we which were alive that know the Lord will be taken up to heaven. The reason he takes us up is to get us off this earth because he's going to pour out seven years of some judgment on this earth. It's going to be terrible. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to keep anybody from going there that I could help. And that's another story you <laughs> have to get into. Them. Oh, sure, sure. But uh, what did you think about Buddy's, uh, like, uh, musical ability? Like, when he started uh, performing, like, you know, playing guitar and stuff like that, uh, were you <laughs> were you pretty impressed that he could play pretty well? Yeah, didn't take him very long. First thing he... He got with uh, Bob Montgomery and the kids a little bit of uh, that old bluegrass type stuff. And they wasn't very good at it. And that just wasn't their cup of tea. And Buddy broke loose from Bob and started out on his own and uh, gathered up to get some, some players. You know, Don Gass was one who played the bass and uh, tinkered. Not Tinker, but uh, Jerry Allison played the drums, and I think they started out together, and they did some recordings. I've got a copy of the recordings. Uh, it was very good, very good. Um, but uh, the main thing I can hope for is to get to see Buddy again in heaven, and I know that will. Uh, right now, I just thought I'd mention this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a little 15 minute uh, deal. It'll, it'll tell about salvation and different things. 
about the, the Lord. And uh, I'd be glad to send it to anybody free. It'd be about 15 minutes. If they'll just write me on hollyhouse.com. That's H-O-L-L-E-Y. LarryHolly.com. Um, LarryHolly.com. And I'll tell them all I can about whatever they want to know about Buddy. Buddy, I've seen Buddy in remorse, and I've seen him try to do shouting. So I've seen him in all kinds of situations. Sure. And I'd go out there at some of them little dances where he was playing because there's always some tough guy in about that age going to beat up on the singer, you know. And I'd go out there to make sure they didn't. Um, man, everybody liked him, especially the girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, well, he could play. And some of them, uh, when they danced, they didn't do the jitterbug like some of these people think. They did the bop. <laughs> yep. And it was slower, more rhythm rhythm to it. And it, it's fun to watch some young people dance. But they really like for Buddy to play. You see, he put a lot into it. And I, I seen him in a battle of the bands they had here in town. And there's some pretty good entertainers at him. And Buddy hadn't come out yet. Some of them guys just dressed in their Levi's and all. Here come Buddy at the very last bicep. Didn't have any band member. He was in a suit and a tie. And he played, uh, I forget what song he played. It seemed like it was Sexy Ways, something like that. True Love and Ways, probably. He won the contest going away. I thought maybe the other guys might, because they were so good. But when Buddy come, he, he showed them up right quick. And I, I just have so many good memories of Buddy, and I, I know I'll get to see him again. And if anybody else wonders if they would like to see him again, then they need to do it in heaven, because that's where he's at. Yeah. Um, anything else you'd like to... Nobody, you just ask you. Sure, sure. And, and uh, one thing about your brother is that he was, uh, and he still is to, to this day, one of my all-time favorite uh, artists of all time. I, I grew up. See, I'm only, I'm only 29 years old, so I'm a young guy still. But uh, my father kind of raised me with uh, music from Buddy, you know, from Buddy's uh, library. And we also used to watch, like, the Buddy Holly story all the time on VHS before it came out on DVD and Blu-ray and all that stuff. And uh, so I've always been a big fan of your brothers for, oh, uh, for at least majority of my life. I mean, he was my first love for music and and, and still is to this day. I, I still think he's better than half the, half the people that uh, perform nowadays. Yeah, um, here a while back, I saw a deal on TV that showed a whole bunch of different back in the 50s different little groups and the buddy just showed them up I mean it's not just because he's my brother but he had something they didn't have and he put everything he had into it now I, I believe buddy gained more fans in about the last two years of his life than anybody I know of he wrote a lot of songs. He had four things going for him. He was a good singer, a good songwriter, and uh, he could play the guitar good and a good innovator. You know, you take a, a, uh, just a run-of-the-mill song and let a guy that's a good innovator get a hold of it and do it. And it's a different song altogether. And that's the way Buddy was. He surprised me, and I've always thought I was pretty pretty good at, re at music, you know. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, <clears throat> people might want to know about it. There, I wrote a book, The Buddy I Knew. It's a small book, but it's got some pictures and everything, and it's $15. 
and then I've got a, a bigger book with pictures, and it's a thick book. It tells about my life and Buddy mixed in and all the things we did together. And then I've got a DVD of me talking about Buddy's life. Uh, that's $20, 15 or 40 or 20 <laughs> I'm not on this to try and sell stuff, but no, no, that's like okay. People know they can get this stuff if they want it. Yeah, they can get it on your website, uh, LarryHolly dot com, and that's Holly with an E and a Y, yeah. not not a Y, not just a Y. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, I I actually have been to your tell website. Them, tell yeah. them how much I appreciate the fans. Oh, sure. They, I mean, they just adore Buddy. Seems like and. I'd like for them to get to know how they might get to see him again. A lot of them are probably Christian people already, but if there's lots and lots of people that are not, and they won't get a chance. And uh, uh, what what do you think Buddy's career would have been like had he still lived? Do you think he would have done? Well, obviously he probably would have done more music, but I mean, what do well, you think uh, his legacy would have been? <laughs> He had bought a real nice lot here in Lubbock, not too far from where I live, and was going to build a big nice home on it and have a music studio right there in his home. And it would have did real well. He was getting into a little bit more of a classical type field. You heard that, you know, uh, raining in my heart. Yeah. That had some orchestration in it, and I thought it was real good. The fact is, first time I heard it, before anybody else got to hear it, he sat right here on my divan and, and borrowed my guitar and played it for me. I said, buddy, that is really pretty. He said, yeah, I just cut it the other day in New York. And he, I came up in my airplane, uh, a day or two after that, this is about three weeks before he got killed. And he loved to fly in my airplane. I'd let him fly a little bit up in the air, I'd not land it or anything, or take off. But I believe if I'd had him in my airplane that night, he wouldn't have crashed. Oh, so sure. I know probably what caused the crash. I imagine all the windows were frosted over with four warm bodies right there in that 10 below zero weather. They just got out off the runway a little ways and went down. But I don't know for sure what caused it. But anyway, the Lord took them, those that were saved. Yeah. And I hope that they all were, but you know, you just don't know. Yeah, and... Mm -hmm. uh Oh, uh, it's kind of it's kind of surprising too, you know, with the legacy that Buddy built for himself. Because I, I'm sure he probably didn't think that he was going to, you know, I, I'm sure he wanted to make it big, but I'm sure he that wasn't really his main focus. I'm sure all he really wanted to do was just put on a play some good songs and just try to entertain people more or less, rather than worry about success. Okay, yeah, yeah. Buddy would come to me and ask what I thought about a certain song. I'd say, well, you, that's going to be a dandy, I believe. And I couldn't, I always thought I was a music critic, but I couldn't criticize Buddy on anything because he could beat me at it. <laughs> and he, did, he learned it so fast, I couldn't figure out. See, he, he listened to him. The radio at night, which is little gang of guys, two or three guys, and they'd listen to Frogman and, you know, all those guys that does that crazy stuff and it was coming on. And I don't really like that kind of stuff. But, um, but he was picking up on everything. I was really amazed at how quick he did it. <clears throat> yeah, I'd say so. I, I think it, it's pretty impressive. Uh, what did you think about the uh, the movie that they came out with, uh, the Buddy Holly story? I, I'm pretty sure that was... Uh, that was 
pretty, pretty controversial. That movie. was a sorry movie. Sorry <laughs> movie. Uh, they didn't ask us anything. Uh, they asked Maria, and Maria didn't know him about six months, you know, five yeah. or six. And so I don't know. They didn't get the whole story right. Had a lot of discrepancies. And <laughs> Gary Busey sure didn't look like Buddy. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I it, like Gary Busey as an actor. I really did. Sure. Yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah, and, and that's just the thing too. Like, I don't understand. It's like you know when they made when they made La Bamba, they pretty much hit everything just about correctly. So why couldn't they do that back in nineteen seventy eight with the Buddy Holly story? You know, because they didn't even mention about you guys, you or Travis. They didn't mention about uh, you know half the things that they should have talked about in the movie. In fact, they kind of pretty much made it seem like nobody, like like you guys, never existed. I'm just picking up on part of your words. You talk so fast. Oh, I can talk slower. I can talk slower. I'll, I'll re-ask the question. I, I what I was trying to say was uh, they never included you or your brother Travis into the movie, and I thought that oh, was yeah, they, disappointing. Yeah, Paul McCartney come over and. Not not him in person, but some of his crew. They came up here and they, and uh, filmed me. Me and Travis singing a little song. Yeah, I forgot. I see that song was "Remember Me," I believe. And it was a country type song. Yeah, I we have. Still do that song. I have that <laughs> on DVD. Actually, I have a copy of the real Buddy Holly story that they came out with that Paul McCartney hosted. I own it. I own the copy of it. Yeah, we we they flew along the side of us in a helicopter while we were driving in the van, and they just right outside the window up in this helicopter and filming us. We thought that was a little bit weird, but they they did every kind of thing they could to make help buddy along. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and uh, Paul McCartney did a great job on actually telling the whole story of Buddy's life rather than the rather yeah, than the did. movie. Yeah, because the movie didn't do much. The movie, like you said, was only half right, but Paul McCartney did a better job, and I think that's why he uh, wanted to do it in the first place because uh, yeah. he knew that the the movie wasn't right, so we had to make it right. <laughs> I, I met Paul McCartney stayed backstage one time for two or three hours with him. Wow. Uh, and over in Liverpool, England. And he was a nice guy. Real nice. So, uh, uh, Lubbock pretty much has honored Buddy in his legacy. They built a big statue of him, and they. Is there like a museum of, of him, too, or something? In Lubbock? Yeah, there's, there's a the Buddy Holly Center, they call it. It's got a pretty nice little museum with various things, some of his, his guitars, and uh, he didn't have too many guitars. I bought him two, and then he, right at the very end, he bought a, a Gibson just before he died. They got it up there. Uh, they got quite a few things there, and they have little bands come around and play. I, me and my brother Travis have played out there, and my daughter Sherry, she sings. In fact, she's fixing to go up into Minnesota and do a big show where they're going to have model 50 model cars. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think she was staying there, too. Yeah, she, uh, Sherry was telling me that because I... Uh I've been chatting with her uh, on Facebook a lot, and I've also been chatting with your son, Randy, who I was sort of trying to talk to as well, but uh, they said that you wanted to do the interview, so we just, uh, which, I'm, which I'm honored about, because I, I'm, I'm actually, was trying to get you to, to do an interview with me for quite a long time, but I heard you were not feeling well, so that's why we waited. Yeah, I, I used to run fast and jump. Climb trees, <laughs> climb ropes. When I was in the Marines, I could outdo most of the guys. Yeah. But 
I'm going to have to move things wrong with me now. <laughs> I can go around a little bit. We got a cabin up in the mountains, way up 9,000 feet, and I'm going to go up there in a few days and uh, hope I, my lungs will stand it. <laughs> <laughs> So what did you do for, like, a, a career? Because didn't your mom and dad own, like, a, like uh, some type of, uh, well, they owned their own business or whatever, I believe? Did you work for them or mm-hmm. something back in the day? Did what? Uh, did your parents, your parents owned, like, a, a, a business, didn't they? Like, uh, no. No? They didn't. Uh, I owned the business. Okay. It was a Holly Tile Company. Before that, it was Lubbock Ceramic Tile. And then I went broke. Okay. And then I had to start over again. That was the best lesson I ever learned in my life. To go and broke. Okay. I started over again for the Holly Tile Company. Did real good in both times. But Daddy never did own. Daddy was always poor until some royalty money started coming in off Buddy's records. Oh, okay. He was a good hard worker, but. You've heard of guys that work so hard that they're poor? Yeah. Daddy. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of wondering about that because they, they, they did cover that in the Buddy Holly story movie that there was a Holly Holly Tile place, but I didn't know. Holly I, Tile. Yeah. My, my company. <laughs> Buddy worked for me for a while. In fact, he's, this house that I'm in right now, I built it. Buddy helped me. A little bit. He on some of the tile work, and they dug the storm cellar for me. Him and uh, Bob Montgomery and somebody else. Uh, you know, Joe B was just uh, a late comer with them. Yeah. He just. But easy, you know. Anything you need to know about him, I'll try to tell you. Yeah, uh, I did have a question about the crickets. Uh, do you still keep in contact with them at all? Uh, I have been down to Jerry Allison's little farm in Tennessee and met him and Joe B. Rip. And we knocked around together a day or two. But I don't see them very often. Okay. We saw they're grown apart from each other, but. You know, just getting older, everybody, I guess. Yeah. You know, Buddy, people remember Buddy as a young person. <laughs> but Buddy would be, he'd be 76, I guess. Yeah, now he would be, yes. <laughs> and he and I had the same month of birthdays, because I was born September 30th, 1983, and he was born in September of, of what, what was it, 1935 or 36? September. 36? Yeah. The seventh. Yeah, nineteen thirty-six. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I knew that was right. <laughs> no, because I was wondering, uh, uh, off subject anyway, if uh, if uh, if you had like uh, a way to get a hold of uh, any any member of the crickets, because I would love to talk to them if I ever had a chance to. I don't really even know how to get a hold of them right now. Okay. Um, I haven't seen them in years. Oh. They do their own thing, and we do ours. Because the closest that they ever came to my area was when I was a little kid. Uh, they came to a little, uh, uh, the Legion in uh, Middle River, Minnesota, and I, that's only like 20 miles away from where I live, and they signed, uh, they did a whole uh, show, like, based on their music and the stuff that they were doing, and they signed, like, a napkin for, for my dad, and they gave me a uh, a guitar pick, and but as far as I know, that's the closest they've ever been to to my area. But, but this was way back, like in the late eighties or so. Uh, there's, I've I've got a few things of buddies that I really treasure, you know. Um, but. I don't have anything for sale, really. Yeah. Well, I know that I've seen, like, uh, R- Randy uh, would put some stuff up on for eBay on some of the stuff that you were doing. Yeah, have. he had uh, one or two of Buddy's picks. I kept him in a little 
special books. And I told him he could sell them. He needed some money. And, um, and something else or other flyers. I think he, he, he had a flyer or two. You know what that is. He, I advertised his show, but it'd be on. Yeah, yeah. But I'm glad he could sell them because he needed the money. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I'm sure I'm pretty sure there's a lot of well, obviously there's a lot of fans of of, of your of your brother that would love to own some of these actual merchandise or flyers or whatever whatever Buddy Holly related things you can find. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and don't let anybody ever tell you that you know they they think it's all fake and everything because I mean I I I, I I've always been a big fan of your brother and I, I believe that anything that you guys do is completely real, a hundred percent real because. Why? Why? Me, why, why waste people's time? You know. Let me ask you something. Um, are, are you interested in buying anything of buddies? Well, I'm not a rich man, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> and technically I'm unemployed. I'm only living off unemployment for the time being, so I don't really have a whole lot of money. We could always, you know, we could always talk about it later, like to your to your son um, or anything. But I'm I, I'm not a rich man. I couldn't afford half the stuff that you guys want. <laughs> it's kind of expensive. <laughs> yeah, some of that stuff goes pretty high. I, I, I really got aggravated with Maria. She called up one day and said, uh, we're going to have an auction in Dallas. And um, if we'll put all the stuff you got, all the stuff I've got, we'll have auctions split the money. Well, the auction sold everything that I sent her. Didn't sell anything she had, and she got six hundred and forty thousand. Oh wow! And didn't pay us the dime. Boy, I talked to her in the Marine Corps language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine that conversation. But, I mean, she, she she's we get, we get along now, all right. Because I I've, I've tried to let it go, but she. And your money hungry to food. Wow. And and uh, and Buddy, wasn't Maria pregnant with uh, Buddy's kid, or was that just a myth at the time? What's that? Was uh, okay. Pitch. Was uh, Maria pregnant at the time when Buddy died, or was that just a myth? Because I heard rumors that uh, Buddy was supposed to have a child or whatever. Was that true, or was that just all kind of fake? I don't think she was pregnant. We couldn't tell it when she came here when Buddy died. Okay. Uh, but she, 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 you can't tell everything about what she says. <laughs> Just <laughs> never know. <laughs> well, I tell you what there, there Larry, I, I definitely appreciate the fact of being able to, to chat with you. This was uh, a lot of fun, and I'm glad uh, that I could find, uh, that you could find the time to, to talk as well, because, uh, uh, people people want Buddy's legacy to continue for for decades to come, and I think it will. With with time and stuff, I think uh, I think his legacy will live on literally forever. I don't think he'll it'll fade away anytime. So this is it's pretty fun. Well, um, yeah, I would like for you to do this for me. Uh, I'm real interested in getting the gospel out to buddies, fans, and people. And uh, if I get a chance, I'll send them a 15-minute recording of, of the way we believe in our church, Baptist. And they might want that. And it might help some of them to go to the Lord if they don't know it. Some of them may already know the Lord, but I'm satisfied as a lot of them don't. So, and that'll be free. Yeah, I'll send it to them free. They'll just write me. Uh, Larry Holly, H-O-L-E-Y, dot com. Okay. Well, oh, that's or the DVD or the, the big book. Sure. The big book what everybody likes. Cause it's funny and it's got good, good stories. Uh, yeah. It's all true. I mean, something 
or some of the jobs I did. And I mean, you'll laugh your head off about some things that really happened. Oh yeah, I mean, um, in in a way, I kind of wish I lived back to those days, you know, uh, in the fifties and sixties, and even you know, even prior to that, because. Uh, even with the depression, I'm pretty sure you know with, with the with the age of rock and roll and classic country and everything, I'm pretty sure that it was still fun to live in those times compared to nowadays. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, well anyway, Larry. Anyway, Larry. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, I can I can talk slower. Uh, I said that even even in those times, the fifties and the sixties and and back even further, I'm sure it was fun to live in those times compared to nowadays, because even though you had the Great Depression, uh, but you still had rock and roll, you still had classic country, people you know worked for each other. You know, I mean. Everybody was kind of clean cut in a way, and I don't know. Think life was a, a lot simpler compared to nowadays. Yeah, he had all kinds. He was he he did some slow songs. I like his slow songs better as a general rule than I did. In fact, I didn't never like Peggy Sue or. Um, That'll be the day, but they seem to sell pretty good. Yeah. But yeah. Some of the older songs, I mean, the later songs that he did, he had some real talent there. You know, like, uh, that's what they tell me, that's what they say. Remember that one? Yep, yep. I'm pretty familiar with a lot of... Uh, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of Buddy's tunes. Uh, even the the deeper tracks, the ones that never were the hits, I actually uh, I actually uh, can say that I pretty much have heard, as far as I know anyway, just about every tune or track that Buddy Holly or song that Buddy ever uh, sang. So um, that's how big of a fan I am. I'm just really amazed at uh, how much but he did in the last two or three years of his life. I mean, he he did more in three years than most people do in a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That is, you know, and and like I like I said before, I mean, I I just don't, I I, I just think that he probably did, never thought he would ever, you know, be as big as he has been. Because, you know, a lot of people like to focus a lot of the attention when they talk about who is a real king of rock and roll, you know, Elvis Presley. But I truly think that Buddy is more or less the, the, the pioneer of rock and roll, the king of rock and roll, the real king. Anyway, because Elvis was great, but Buddy put more, I think he put more effort into his music than, than uh, Elvis Presley did. Yeah, and a lot of times... But he wrote the songs himself. Yep. Uh, and uh, I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but Elvis couldn't hardly play the guitar. Oh. And I know he, he didn't hardly write any songs, but he had a good voice and personality. So he went over pretty good, especially with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Well, anyway, Larry, I, I just want to say once again thank you for uh, letting me do this interview with you. This was a lot of fun, and uh, this will be uh, part of my YouTube series called Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture, which uh, I'll let Sherry and Randy know when it goes live, uh, because I have a few other guests that I have beforehand that uh, I've already interviewed uh, ahead of time. So, But this will go up probably in July. Just so you know. Okay, um, I appreciate you. Yeah. Christian, you're getting to talk with you. And uh, you tell them fans that I think a lot of them, and I'd like to sell them a book. <laughs> They'll love it if they get it. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll look forward to my copy here pretty soon. Uh, I'll give uh, Sherry or, or Randy my address and uh, whatever you want to do. If you want to send me a copy, you go right ahead. It's up to you. You're the, you're you're in charge. It's your it's your book. <laughs>
Well, now, now these little recordings that I'm giving away free, uh, we haven't even got them made yet, but we're going to start making some. I'd like to sell at least 20 of them. Okay. Just to people that really would like to know a little bit about the Lord more. And, and Buddy, too. Sure. But, you know, here's the thing about it. We found so many people that come through Lubbock that they just worship Buddy and they don't even know the Lord. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, they're missing the boat there. If they ever want to see Buddy alive, that'll be in heaven, you know. Yep. You gotta get there first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. A lot of a lot of fans that are starstruck all the time. Heck, I would be too if a, if Buddy was still alive, you know, if he was still alive to this day and I was talking to him instead of yourself. I, I would be kind of starstruck, you know, because he's a big, you know, he would he would have been even bigger had he been alive still, you know, so. Yeah, he would have, he would have got bigger. <laughs> I think he would have been being Crosby or any of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for the, the conversation, Larry, and I, I definitely appreciate it. Definitely. Okay, I appreciate you. Thank you. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All righty, and that was uh, Larry Holly, the older brother, basically Buddy Holly's older brother. Uh, uh, if you know Buddy Holly, Charles Harden Holly, we just got done having a great conversation, the best that we could anyway, of the of the uh, learning a little bit about the but uh, legacy of Buddy Holly. I think that's uh, very important for people to know. You know, if we're gonna do uh, icons of pop culture series, we should do it right or not do it at all more or less, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, please check out Larry's website, LarryHolly.com, and it's Holly with a E-Y, not a Y, because I know how that can get confused sometimes when it comes to that last name and everything, but uh, anyway, thanks to uh, Larry for the, the conversation, thanks to his uh, son Randy and his daughter Sherry for hooking it up for me, I definitely appreciate you guys, and uh more success to you guys in the future, and uh, we'll definitely chat on Facebook a lot. <laughs> we'll keep in touch. All right, I'm Frankie Slauson, and we'll see you guys later for more Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture Series on YouTube.com. <laughs>